What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you guys are new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, and make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content we have coming out. Now with this video, we're going to be jumping into our Indie Comics Weekend, and this video is going to be Noctera issue number 5. And if you haven't been keeping up with this line, go ahead and check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It will get you completely caught up on everything that has been going on in this super awesome line. Now, this is written by the amazingly talented Scott Snyder. The art is by Tony, Salvador, Daniel, and Tamu Mori. And this story has been really unique. It's felt a lot like uh, Pitch Black, if you guys remember that, with, the, uh, with Vin Diesel. The Chronicles of Riddick, all of that stuff. It really gives me those vibes when I'm... When I'm reading this. Because we're introduced to a world that is full of what they call shades. And these shades, they live in the darkness. And they kill and take over every single living thing. Kind of like a parasite to a host. And with the sun being completely blacked out, there seems to be no hope for the future. Not until Val and Amori, they end up getting a job to escort an old man and a young girl. In doing this, they get chased down by, an, by a man by the name of Blacktop Bill, appearing to be some kind of, of hybrid shade. But they end up making it, making it to this place that they refer to as a kind of Eden. A place where there is the last of the sunlight that they call Lux. And with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright guys, so as we jump into issue number 5, we're picking up because Val and Mori, they've made it to this place. This last safe haven that, that was supposedly just more myth than reality. And as they're making their way through here, Amori slowly being taken over by the shade, the transformation is, is dang near complete at this point. Val looks around and she is completely astonished. Astonished because she didn't believe that this place was actually real. And even though she is here, standing here right now, she still is in complete disbelief. That is, until they go into a room. As they open up this door, as Tiberius opens up this door, and she sees the light. She sees the Lux. She sees a whole room full of light. A thriving garden. This exists outside of anything she can fully comprehend. Whatever happened during the big PM that caused all of the darkness, this place is its opposite. And sitting in all of the middle of this is a bed. And this bed is where they're supposed to place Imori. And as they go to escort him down, Imori, he has a full change. We see him snap and go after Val. Attacking her, he ends up clawing her throat. And she falls, appearing to die on the ground. And so she drifts into unconsciousness. She's not dead, she's merely knocked out. Knocked out for a good 20 plus hours at this point. But this is where we pick up with Amori. Amori sitting in this bed underneath the Lux. Absorbing all of its light and we see most of the infection from the shade has left his body. Appearing to be almost completely healed at this point. Now this isn't a normal case. Amori, he was to the point of turning into a complete shade. It usually doesn't work on people when they've gone to this extent, when they're this deep into the transformation. But Amori, he's strong. He's a strong fighter that was able to, to persevere through the shade infection. And with the help of the Lux, he was able to overcome it. And this is where we see Val. She's up, bandaged up, appearing to have spent some time underneath the Lux herself. Because the Lux, it, it doesn't just bring people back from the brink of being a shade. It's got much deeper abilities that we're going to talk about here in a minute. Now, up to this point, Val is wondering how much longer it's going to be until he's completely healed. And she, the, the doctor, the nurse, lets him know that Tiberius would know better than anybody. And so, Val, she goes in search of Tiberius, finding him in what appears to be some kind of control room. And inside this room, they're observing Amori. They're observing everything that he has said in this shade language while he was under the infection of a shade. And so it is their plan to try to dis dissect it to the best of their ability. They're trying to translate this dead language. But this is when they start to have their conversation, and Val is really just being thankful. Thankful for everything that they have done up to this point, allowing them to come inside, and being able to use the Lux, being able to be underneath the light, and save her brother's life. And Tiberius lets us know that it's 
It's really the least he could do. You know, he tried, they tried to save his brother's life. They were able to save his brother's granddaughter. That's the least he could ask for. That's the least that they, he could expect. And so that they are welcome here as long as they choose to stay. But first, she wants to know more about this place. She wants to understand everything that has happened and, and how the Lux is possible. But Tiberius lets her know that, that he's not even 100% sure on how all of this is how all of this is possible. You know, he even built this machine, but he's still unsure on, on how it, exactly it works. He calls it a prism. And he lets us know that 15 years ago, his brother Augustus, he came to him, called him and told him to build this place. Said dozens more were being built around the world and then gave him blueprints for all of it. Whenever he asked, he would just bring up that, that the sunlight on earth was going to be better, that he was going to bring the light of God to earth. And a few days before the big PM happened, he told him to get inside of the, the, the place that he built, to stay there and wait until the dawn. And he lets her know that their prism, their lux, it's weaker than other places. But even so, its properties are so unique But it, because it essentially gives them immortality. It heals them from dying, from sickness, from aging. The Lux it is a pathway to immortality. It is the fountain of youth. But he tells her that they are more than welcome to stay in this place. But before they, they give an answer, before they immediately say yes, because that's what she wants to do, they need to be aware of exactly what this place is. And this is when he opens up a curtain, revealing to be human shades. People that they had lost along the way, now they are using them for science. Using them to try to understand the shades, to find the best way to be able to defeat them. To figure out exactly why they're here and why they have taken over everything. And he tells her that she is welcome to stay. They are both welcome to stay. But this is what this place is. It's no more, no less. You have to take it or leave it. But this is when she gets word that Amori is now awake. And she goes over to Amori. Seeing him barely being able to stand. But the shade infection is gone. And right now there's a lot of emotions going around. But what we really find out is Amori, he initially went outside beyond the wire and he got infected by the shades on purpose. He did this because he wanted to die. He is so tired of just surviving, of living in this manner, of having to live this way day after day. Even if this place is real, even if this, this little Eden that they have with the Lux is real, this isn't a life that he wants to live anymore. You know, the days of old are gone. And as long as the shades are out there every single day, as long as it's no longer being able to just live your life how you want, but it's more about having to survive day in and day out, the exha exhaustion that he feels on a daily basis, he wants it all to end. And obviously this infuriates Val. After everything that she has done, after all of the effort she has done to make sure that he stays alive, that he breathes every single day, that he has food on the table, everything that she has sacrificed to ensure his survival, she sees it as a complete insult to everything that she has done. And she tells him straight up, we're staying here, we're staying at Sanctuary, we're gonna live here, and you're gonna have a good life. And this is where she storms off. She storms off and she goes to bed, but she's not asleep for long before she's woken up by Piper, the young girl that they helped get here. And Piper lets her know that, that she wants to have her own little call sign and all this good stuff. But really what to take away from here is Piper doesn't want to leave them. Piper has, has found a connection with them, even if Tiberius is kin to her. She feels like Val and Amori are the people she belongs with. So if the day ever comes, they decide that they want to leave this place. The only thing that Piper asks is that she comes along with them. And Piper lets her know, you know, you may not be wanting to leave right now or just yet, but I did swipe your keys. So we have the keys to your truck if we do need to be able to get out of here. And so Val, she goes off. She heads down to have a conversation with Tiberius to find out more a little bit about this place and, and really make a concrete decision on if they're going to stay or not. And as she makes her way down the hallway, into the control room. This is where she overhears and eavesdrops on a conversation. And he's having a conversation with Blacktop Bill. Him and Tiberius are talking about how they have the book. Val and Amori have the book. 
Not only do they have the book, but they are inside of your facility. And so he tells Tiberius to let him inside so he can do the job that he was hired to do. So he can come inside and kill all of them. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. That cliffhanger is one heck of an ending, and it leaves so many questions to be answered. One, is Tiberius working against them? Is he working with the Shades? Or does he have an overall plan? Was killing his brother a means to an end? Was it retribution for causing the big PM in the first place? And who is this hybrid Shade? Did... Did Tiberius create this guy? And if not so, where did Blacktop Bill come from? His story is still very clouded. We don't know anything about his backstory, where he comes from, or why he appears to be nothing more than a silhouette. But I have to say, so far, I am thoroughly enjoying this. This has been such a fun run so far. I, I really do see this, not necessarily the story itself, but the concept, the idea behind it being able to be transferred over to a television series or something of that nature. And while I would love to see something like that, this comic is, is more than enough in my opinion. The artwork, it truly does really pop up. The colors are absolutely phenomenal. The variant covers have to be hands down some of my favorite artwork in recent months. But yeah, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. If you have not yet, do me a favor, hit that sub button. Hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content we have coming out, and until the next breakdown.